Welcome to Empathic Fire. I am your reader, Jay. These are going to be general messages for the sign of Gemini in the month of February 2019. What's going on, Gemini? How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are all doing well. We didn't ask for that, but we got a card of Three of Pentacles there. So that might be significant for some of you. Three of Pentacles is usually talking about teamwork, uh, negotiations, and, and, and planning something out and then executing on that plan. And if you want to fall into that bracket of third-party situation, that could also be significant for somebody out there. We're not asking for anything, but if it shows up rarely, you know, do I have many spills come out in the pre-shuffle? So if they come up, I try to talk about them. Anyway, hi, Gemini. <laughs> How are you guys? Everything going good in your life? Good, good. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> and, if, and if not, I, I hope it, it takes a turn for the better, right? Alright guys, uh, shuffle it off camera, that's your main spread there. What I'm going to do now is shuffle for your outcome and your overall energy. Once all the cards are out and they're lying face up, that's when the reading begins. You can check in the description box below for the timestamp and it'll be there for you if you want to go ahead and jump ahead. And if not, you'll just sit here and watch me shuffle these cards real quick, okay? Also down below you will see the information you need if you want to get a personal reading with me. Uh, you send me an email, I give you a confirmation, you send me your $25 payment, and then you will receive your video within 24 to 72 hours is the turnaround for the personals, okay? Uh, anything else in the intro? Ah, I, you might be able to tell if, you, if you've watched me before. Uh, I am slightly under the weather, but like I'm mostly out of the woods on this one, so if I do have to pause the video uh, in order to take a drink of water or clear my throat or something like that. I apologize ahead of time. It is what it is. Life is life. Let's do it, okay? Let's get the outcome for Gemini in February 2019, please. Outcome for Gemini in February 2019. <clears throat> I'll try my best not to cough in your guys' ear. I think that's like kind of really gross. So, if I have to pause for that, I will do it as well. There it is. Alright, and bottom of the deck is the overall energy. Okay. Only one card came face down. And there it is. And how do we look on, on the screen here? Not too bad. It's a little tight, but... You know, that's what we got to work with. <laughs> I have one deck of cards, like, they're too big to even fit in this little table I have, so I'll never use them. <laughs> anyway, uh, please show me Gemini in February 2019. Please show me where Gemini is in 2019. February 2019. Please show me Gemini in February. Okay, thank you. All right, Gemini, coming into February 2019, you come in as the Hermit card reverse. This is the Steampunk Tarot deck, in case you're wondering. I'll show you this card upright, just so you can get a better look at it, have an easier perspective on it. But, of course, in reverse is how this came out for you. So, card of Virgo, so you might have a Virgo in your life who is significant, but that is neither here nor there. It's really more about the energy of the card and, and the message therein. And the Hermit talks about reflection, right? He talks about doing inner work. He talks about finding out sort of... He kind of does like an overhaul or, or, or would invite you to do an overhaul or do a deep dive into something. Okay, the hermit goes into those darkest points in our lives, those darkest places in our minds, and he really, you know, sifts through a lot of the garbage that we have pent up inside of us or suppressed within us, and he really shines a light, as you can see in the upright, he carries that lantern, right? And he is about illuminating dark places and going into places that are uncomfortable and facing things that we have ignored or that we've kind of pushed to the side and suppressed. Uh, and in this reverse position, it just shows immediately, Gemini, that many of you, if not most of you, are not doing that. 
uh, you're, you're reluctant to do it, you are resistant to it, and so in some cases you might be refusing. And the hermit is, like I said, it can come in the, in, in the form of an external person, or rather he might show up and another person is suggesting that you do all those things that I just told you the hermit is responsible for. Um, but then you would be re you would be rejecting that person's suggestion. You would not be open to it. Um, others of you, this is just something that you know you need to do and you just haven't done it. Um, and, but, you know, here it is. And it's just this feeling I get with you, Gemini, that it would be a lot of work number one, number two, it would take a lot of time, and number three, it would be very painful. Whatever this is that you are adverse to or avoiding or resistant to, uh, and it could deal specifically with like one particular event in your life, one area of your life, one relationship in your life where you would have to get to the deep, deep down of what's the cause here, what's the causation, what is the issue here, where's the friction, or what is the pain that, you know, in my day-to-day -day life, I don't recognize, but subconsciously, it's like plaguing me subconsciously. It is really keeping me uh, sort of on this merry-go-round, I feel, you know? And a merry-go-round, like, I personally have only gone on them like a few times in my life when I was a kid, but I always found them to be kind of dull. Like, it's meant to be a ride and it's meant to be entertaining, but literally you are on this contraption ju that just goes around and around in circles. And so I think maybe that's what some of you are, are experiencing. You're on a path, you're in a routine that goes round and round in circles, and for the most part, it can be contenting, it can be entertaining enough, but... There's no real journey there because you are going around the same predictable circle. You are going around and having the same predictable cycle. And the hermit, I feel you are just resistant. As much as you don't like being on whatever merry-go-round you're on, whatever you're experiencing with that, as much as you don't like that, you're also not in the mood to do what the hermit asks you to do, what the hermit would is specialized in, you know, the hermit is a, you know, it's a major arcana and all the major arcanas basically are specialized in something or have a core focal point to them. And his core focal point is to handle the bad shit, all the pain, all the frustration, all of the anguish, whatever we're talking about. I'm not getting this in any particular area right now, but however it applies to you, whether it's a circumstance, whether it's a relationship, whether it's something to do with your own uh, personal health, your own mental health, your own physical health, your own emotional health, whatever, you are just like shutting it down. You're very shut down to it. And that's just what it is. You're just shut down to it. And I think it's because, oh, okay. Mm, there's stuff going on around you, or at least there's one particular thing going on around you that is, and it's a, Yes, okay. Yes, okay. All right, so you're here, right? And you've got these two things kind of in your peripheral, not your peripheral, but in your consciousness. And this is going to talk about what's going on deeper in your subconscious. So, so instead of doing this hermit energy and getting involved in that in an upright, effective uh um, position or, uh, or effectively using, uh, what the hermit embodies, you're taking on the energy more so of the magician. Um, another major arcana card, sometimes associated with Aries and sometimes associated with you, Gemini as well. And, uh, I think I've heard maybe once or twice someone said Virgo, but I was just like, <laughs> okay. Um, but more importantly, the, the, the magician is a self-made person. So, the magician, in terms of his, <clears throat> excuse me, in terms of his finances, in terms of his career, in terms of his wherewithal and his knowledge, he just goes about it and he does what he needs to do and he gets things done. He has all the, the tools at his disposal, the sword, 
the wand, the cup, the pentacle, right? All of the different suits in tarot. He has them at his disposal. Disposal. Um, now, the hitch with the magician is, like with anything, he can use his powers for good or he can use his powers for bad. Or he can use them to be beneficial or he can use them to be not so beneficial. It's really all about choice. And the hitch I get... One second, hold on. Okay, sorry about that. I didn't want to cough <laughs> in front of you guys like that. Um, but the hitch that I get with him... Uh, that sometimes comes up, that is definitely present here, uh, Gemini, is that <sighs> often the magician is unaware of or is somehow blind to or ignorant of that line between good and not so good, good and bad, good or beneficial and not beneficial, okay? He can be sort of blinded by his own ego, blinded by his best intentions. And often his intentions are selfish or, or centered on the self, not selfish um, in an arrogant way or, or, or an egotistical way, but selfish and self-centered in, well, my idea is the best idea of everybody else's ideas or all the ideas that have been presented or my way is the best way. And it's not a my way or the highway thing. It really is my way is the best way. Like this, this energy that I feel right now that's attached to this is saying, I've looked at all the options and my option is the best. And there is sort of like a smug, of course, mine is the best or like mm, maybe other people's ideas could work too, but they're not going to work as well. Like, I'm seeing like a scale, like Gemini, you might be rating your idea as a 10 and the next best person's idea is like a 9.5 and both would be clearly passing grades or clearly highly ranked, but there's just like a small margin of difference between what you think or your approach or how you feel versus how other people think, how others are thinking or how other people are feeling and that edges it out. And is that necessarily fair? Is that necessarily objective? Mm, I don't know. Uh, the magician also comes from a place of power. He comes from a, a place of leadership and, 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 and authority a lot of times. So you might be in a family situation, in a work situation. Maybe you're the leader. Maybe you're the head of the household. Maybe you are a project manager. Maybe you are a teacher in a classroom. I don't know. And you have a certain edge in terms of your role in your position over someone else. And for lack of a better word, I think you're sort of taking advantage of that. I think you're sort of relying on that. Well, as your mother or as your father, I say this, and therefore that's what's gonna happen. Well, as the teacher, as the professor of this classroom, I decide in the end, you know what I mean? And I've, you know, many of us have been to college and I've had professors like that where their word is, is the end all be all of what happens in the classroom. And other times, you know, if we have to, let's say, reschedule a, an exam, something like that. Uh, other courses I've had, in my experience, the professor will poll the class. Well, we were supposed to have this exam next Wednesday because of things going on in my schedule. I'm not going to be able to administer the test. Or maybe, you know, this professor is seeing that the course or the classroom just hasn't kept up with the work. So I can't give you the test until you guys fully understand the material. So let's see if we can push it back a week. And some students say that's good. Some students are like, no, that's not good. And then it's like, okay, well, how about next Friday instead of next Wednesday? So there's a compromise going on. There's a polling going on in the course. That is not what this, this magician is doing for you, Gemini. This, this magician is calling all of the shots, not asking for anybody's input and feeling as if, feeling very confident. I'm going to, and, and, you know, confidence is fine. Confidence is good, but if basically it, it comes down to that cliche, too much of a good thing turns out to be a bad thing, basically. It's fine to be confident. It's fine to be self-sufficient and self-made and have this this ability or this, this, this confidence in your abilities. That's great. But if you're not open to other people's opinions or other people's concerns or other people's perspectives and, and, and their approaches to things, you often end up isolating yourself. And I know that you know this. I'm telling you all this shit 
that you already know. You already know that you're not doing a deep dive on your own whatever needs to be delved into, okay? You're already ignoring that. You're already pushing that off to the side. You're already making that not a priority. And you already know that you're in this position of power and you're in a position to call the shots and you're calling the shots without anyone's consultation. And that's your right. That's your prerogative. You have absolutely all the all the 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 the, the rules and the regulations say that you can do that. Should you do that though? <sighs> that's where we're having the issue with you, Gemini. I feel it. That's where the issue is. Just because you can, should you? That's the issue. You know, I mean, you can throw any old silly analogy in there. Just because, you know, as an adult, if you're a full-fledged adult, independent adult, you are within your rights to eat ice cream for dinner five days a week. You can. You're in your power. You, ha you have every right to. There's no rules or regulations that say that you can't. But should you? It's probably not good for your health. It's not good for your dental hygiene. It's not good for your biochemistry. All that sugar, all that, you know, oh, as much as you might want to do that, probably not the best idea. And that's just a silly analogy. So you can plug in to that analogy, whatever you want. But I feel you know you probably should be a little more open to the input or the... Mm, input the suggestions of others the the viewpoints of others or you should do this deep dive you're aware of both of those things okay and i know that you're aware because you have this moon card right beneath the magician that's in the reverse i'll show you the card upright again so you can become used to it but in reverse moon card card of pisces might have a pisces in your life who's significant but that's beyond the point the point here is your intuition is knocking on your door banging on your door you know throwing a bull or throwing a um a sledgehammer up against your door or a wrecking ball and you're just like sitting in your living room as if that thing is not knocking there as if you you're you're better in oh god your better instincts are calling to you pleading to you and in and since this came in the card of uh the moon it could come from a subconscious point so you could be having dreams you could be having like moments of clarity like you're just pouring coffee in the morning and then out of nowhere boom in your head your intuition throws something in there that tells you hey gemini let's do this this way not the other way and then you quickly bury that idea or you quickly throw that out out the window or you quickly pretend that it never even happened you know um, and that's the thing with the moon card, um, is it's not always, or the, 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 <clears throat> excuse me, one of the core attributes of the moon card is that the messaging is not always going to be clear. And when it's in the reverse, it's even more so like the sharpness that you feel is the instinct is the intuition is that nagging feeling or that nagging voice that says something's not right here. And the way in which it happens, the way in which it's delivered, those quick moments, those quick flashes in your consciousness, or those dreams that you have, and then you wake up groggy and you're like, did I just dream about my great aunt Jean? And she told me this, but then she was actually in the form of a turtle? And you're just like, that makes no sense. My aunt Jane was a human being. Turtles don't talk. Therefore, that was all nonsense. So the way in which your intuition is showing up is kind of be bewildering to you. It kind of confuses you or it kind of, because it doesn't make sense. And, you know, Gemini, a lot of times you can rely on sense and be logical to a fault. Um, but because it doesn't come in like a nice cut package or like a, a nicely written letter or text or phone call that just says clearly Gemini you're out there and you're messing up or Gemini you're out there and you're forgetting to do XYZ because it's not coming that way and it's just like this tiny little nagging voice that you can sort of keep quiet keep under wraps you're not paying it any mind and I'm gonna tell you I it's your choice it's your choice it's your choice I don't feel that it's necessarily the best choice, but it's your choice. And, and you know, I'm saying things kind of, you know, ha not haphazardly, but I'm saying things kind of frivolously. And whatever the hermit is concerning, that deep dive into whatever you're supposed to be, you know, addressing, 
I don't want to, I don't want to downgrade that or I don't want to diminish how mm, difficult that would be for you. You know, I'm able to say it with a little bit of candor because I myself have done a lot of deep diving for a while now, personally, and I think I personally am coming out on the tail end of it, so I'm feeling a little open. But I, I've been here resistant to that shit. No, I don't want to talk about that. No, I don't want to think about that. I don't want to, I don't want to listen to that. I don't want to hear this. I don't want to read that. I don't want to feel that. It's just, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to over and over and over again. So I totally understand the resistance and I totally understand that whatever it concerns, it might not be the easiest thing to do. You know, the things that I confronted and continue to confront when that energy pops up for readings for myself personally, God, you know, I just want to throw my hands up to the air and be like, you know, F it. Like, why? I don't, you know, so I totally understand what you might be going through. Uh, and so I just wanted to sort of clarify that I'm saying it as if it's easy, but I know from personal experience it's not easy. Okay. And what's all kind of anchoring, not anchoring, but mm, there's like, how are you showing this to me? How can I describe this? I think I used this analogy before and I feel it again. Ace of Cups here. Filling out your little foursome. We're going to talk about your triplet in a minute. Um, but filling out the, these four cards that I think are really speaking to like your present, like your absolute right now, your absolute like present moment is this Ace of Cups. And this is one of the prettiest to me depictions of the Ace of Cups because uh, number one, it's not offered by a hand. It's down on a lily pad, right? Well, something that could be well, it's not even a lily pad, but it is on top of the water. It's not offered out by a hand from the clouds above. So to me, this is like an actual stable, accountable, like this, this offer, this seedling, this chance with the Ace of Cups is actually more stable. It has more roots to it. It has more of an actual uh, physical form to it. Like you can almost reach out and grab it or taste it. You know, it's very tangible. I feel, um, and this, and it's just to me, one of the more beautiful depictions of the Ace of Cups personally. Uh, but what I'm feeling is whatever this is to you, it's new, it's fresh. <sighs> In some cases, it's like an awakening or a revival or a calling back to some type of reverie is involved here. I feel like this could be, even though this is not traditionally a card of that, it could be a reunion for some of you, a reunion with a certain person or a reunion with a group of people or a reunion even with yourself. If you guys are on some big time spiritual journey, it could be a reunion of self. You know, you guys are one of the uh, dual signs, of course, you're probably the most well-known dual sign because you're represented by twins. And one of the things that is said about you in architectural, uh, or archetypal, excuse me, archetypal uh, terms is that you have a good twin and a bad twin, right? And these two often are copacetic, but sometimes they're very divergent. And I feel, Gemini, you've been divergent, maybe not specifically in good twin, bad twin terms, but you have been divergent. You have been sort of separated from yourself. Some of you, not all of you, but some of you have had parts of yourselves or a significant part of yourself kind of pushed to the wayside, kind of ignored, kind of never fully acknowledged or ever fully given the light of day, okay? And I think that part of you is calling out or that part of you is in need of repair, in need of reunion, in, in need of recognition, something like that, you know? Maybe some of you have been in denial of something about yourselves, whether it's positive or negative, I don't know. But that denial of that part of yourself has, has given you a fracture, has given you this very strict, firm division within yourself. And that this Ace of Cups is a chance, is an opportunity, is perhaps a call out to have that part of yourself re-established re, uh, re within yourself as a whole, you know? Um, if it's not that, if it's not this spiritual journey, very self or, uh, very, um, 
solo individualistic type of uh, interpretation. Like I said, it could be a chance at a relationship, a chance at meeting someone, a chance at re meeting someone or reintroducing yourself to someone or getting back to getting back to like in some cases I feel like a do-over like maybe you got off on the wrong foot in a job or the wrong foot in in, in a in a like a social setting so maybe like friends or something you you were meeting new friends of your partner or you were just expand, ex, uh, expanding your social circle, circle and you met some people but maybe you stepped in it and you now have a chance to kind of reroute and go back and sort of patch things up. And more than anything, behind this card for you, Gemini, there is a loving energy from you or towards you, whichever way it goes. So you are coming from a place of, I do want to be loving, or I'm coming from a place of honesty, I'm coming from a place of tenderness and caring, or that's coming towards you. And this is a wonderful energy around you. It's near you. You know it's near you. Whether it's a person, place, or thing, I don't know. Whether it's something tangible or something a lot more ethereal, something that you can't really put your finger on, but you know it's around you. But there is this resistance, there is this kind of pushing it away, or there is this, uh, you know, your intuition is acting like a messenger telling you, hey, this is like right over there, if you just want to go over there and pay attention to it, and you're just like, no, 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 you didn't say that. And you're really relying on your, your own earthly intuition is what I'm getting here, earthly intuition, which is useful. Earthly intuitions are very useful. I feel that the moon card and the hermit together are trying to give you something coming from, if you believe in it, like the fourth or fifth or even sixth dimension, okay? Your subconscious, your dreamscapes, your higher self, your parallel selves, wherever, whatever you believe in. If you don't believe in any of that mumbo jumbo, your God of choice, okay? your philosophical, your religious belief, whatever it is, whatever's beyond what happens here on earth. I feel these two are in tandem and they're trying to give, I think they're trying to clarify something to you. And you're just like, mm, but that's not of this dimension. That's not of this earth. I don't understand that. I don't accept that right now. Okay. Oh, so that's, that's what's going on in your present right about now, okay? And I don't usually do linear readings, but I just knew as soon as we started, this is what's the now. This is the now. What's this? This might also be now, but I also feel it's kind of past. Your triplet. Where are we going? <laughs> Absolutely. I didn't mean to laugh, but <laughs> they just pointed that out to me so quickly. And I was just like, yeah, <laughs> based on what I feel and then looking down here and them, and them showing that to me immediately, my gosh. All right, so in the top part of your triplet, and oh, I should mention for those who might not be uh, returning viewers or you've never seen a viewing or a reading that I've done that has a triplet. A triplet comes out, I, I do a six card spread, one outcome and an overall, right? So I do six cards mainly. Sometimes one position will get two cards. Each position doesn't have a specific meaning, but if the triplets or if a position gets two cards, it then becomes part of a triplet. Okay, it can fall anywhere where on the board. The triplets have been coming out as sort of separate storylines or uh, storylines that support what's going on in the main four cards. So that's what's that's basically what I mean when I said the triplet, and that's basically what I meant when I said this feels like it could be present, but it also might be past for some of you. Now, nine of wands, two of pentacles, right? So why I laughed and and what kind of just. Sometimes I wish, I, it's not like screaming, like there's not like voices screaming in my head, but it is just like a bang, like a flash, like a big old sort of fanfare, fanfare goes off whenever I get these things. So the Nine of Wands, looking at him, this man with the telescope and the bandage on his head, please focus, please focus better. <laughs> 
and he's looking towards the two wards <laughs> towards the right of that card at this two of pentacles woman on whatever type of bike I guess you would call that a regular bicycle and she's moving away from him so that was immediately called out to me someone is looking at someone walk away turn away resist be reluctant uh, be scared be apprehensive and that makes sense too when we think about what these two cards mean right so first we have the nine of wands the nine of wands uh in the traditional tarot uh rider weight decks is usually called the uh wounded warrior okay he does have a bandage here but you can't really tell that he's a warrior um, but the meaning is still the same, I feel. This interpretation is still going to be the same. This is a guy, it doesn't have to be a guy, but this is, this person on the card, this illustrated person, is a type of person who uh, adheres to the dream, adheres to the mission at hand, does not falter, does not back away from, stands their ground, tries to maintain control, of the situation of the area of the relationship now that can be read in many different ways positive negative you know maintaining control could sound really creepy or really like not attractive to you but that's who this person is whether that's you in many cases if not you Gemini <laughs> sorry uh, that's up for you to decide it is a general reading and so it could be for a few for a few of you this could be you um, but for many of you, it's not. It's someone else. And they've stood their ground. They've remained faithful or loyal towards a plan, towards a vision, most likely. Wands deals more with, like, creative, sort of future-looking or, or future-oriented energies often. So we're talking creative plans. We're talking, uh, in, some in some cases, matrimonial plans. Um, but in other cases, I'm just feeling there is this vision of the future, this vision of what comes next. And someone was like, okay, we've got a plan. I'm going to execute that plan. And along the way, they got bruised and battered. The whole wounded warrior thing, that's at play here too. So along the way that this person, whoever they are in your life, Gemini, whether it's you or someone else, they eventually got beat down by sticking to the plan. They became tired, they became exhausted, they became hurt, they became sullen and, and moody or angry in some cases. But the sort of sad end of it is that they didn't leave. They don't abandon the plan. They don't, you know, scrap the plan and go back to the drawing board or any of that stuff. They think that what the vision is, what, what we set out to do here as a partnership, as a family, as a relationship, dating, work, whatever, this is what we agreed to, so this is what we're gonna do. This person is hard pressed to change their mind or change their perspective, not really change their mind, but change their perspective. And the irony is they are watching someone else, this two of pentacles person on the bike, right away turn their back on the plan or turn their attention if not turn their back on the plan turn their attention away or if it's not that drastic because i think that's for a few i think that whole turn away from run away ignore you know that is for a few and in this case i'm feeling more gemini energy is in the two of pentacles than another person's would be so it might be you or it might not be you okay and to a lesser extent, I'm feeling that it's drastic. It's a total 180. That is in a very few cases. The majority of the cases are aligned to what we uh, traditionally take away from the Two of Pentacles, the traditional interpretation, which is this inability to decide. This, you know, should I go left, should I go right? It's sort of getting into an analysis paralysis. It is represented, or excuse me, this card has pentacles attached to it, so that does involve long periods of time slow moving energy slow to come to terms with slow to make a decision slow to make a move etc 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 right and that kind of makes sense you know if you really look at the illustration right i mean this woman 
she's on a bike and it's not one of, you know, it is the steampunk deck, so it makes sense that it is styled this way, but that type of bike, I'm assuming, is not going to move very fast. And especially since it's on water, you know, so a pentacle dealing with earth energy is all about foundations, all about firm, solid ground. So this pentacles card being depicted as lying on top of water and then in the background having a s sort of overcast stormy sky, those two things don't mix. Solid firmness indicated by the pentacles but on top of or having to trudge through deep, stormy waters, that's difficult. So someone's having a difficult time with adhering to the plan or considering the plan or considering the person who is hold, withhold, not withholding, but withstanding and, 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 and adhering to the plan. You know, and they're having analysis paralysis. I feel that someone is having sort of a fight or flight response, you know? Do I stay here and and involve myself with this nine of, of wands energy, this nine of wands person? Do I stand with them or do I hightail it out of here? And there's this decision going on, either recently in the past or like I said, it's coupled in your in your present. If it is also present, this is your internal, this is your external, okay? For those where this is both present energy. External, or excuse me, internal, external, okay? Now, all of that, this whole, it's almost like a tug of war, really, between this energy and this energy. This person is that person, or these people, if it, however it shakes out in your life, okay? This is almost like a tug of war here. And it oversees or is rooted in some Ten of Swords BS. And I call it BS because Ten of Swords is overkill, right? You've got this guy on this rooftop, basically pinned down to the rooftop with these Ten of Swords. And if, you know, if you literally think of, if I'm going to kill somebody with a sword to the back, how many do I need? I'm going to say you probably need one. I haven't wielded a sword ever in my life, but damn it, it's a sharp blade and humans are made of soft tissue. You probably only need one to, to take some use. So this is overkill. So this is a situation that is overkill or this tug of war thing, this I want, I want to stick to the plan, I'm not sure about the plan energy is over, mm, is exhausted or is, is, is exhausting for someone. So it's either at the very end for somebody, like we don't need to talk about this anymore. It's dead in the ground. We've, we've flogged this horse beyond repair, okay? Or it's overkill in the sense of, <sighs> letting go. Someone is not able to let it go. Someone else is totally able to let it go. That's the two ways you can kind of look at the Ten of Swords. You can look at this as like an awful scene. This is horrendous looking at this. Oh my God, such pain, such horror. And then someone else would look at it. Well, this is a murder scene. Let's go ahead and collect the evidence. You know what I mean? Like somebody would have like a really emotional response to viewing this card and and, and, and what it means and, and how to interpret it. And someone else has a very you know, sort of detached, unemotional, pragmatic approach to it. And, and it's very different. And that could be something that you feel within you. You know, if this, again, is something going on within yourself, Gemini, that could be you. You could be looking at some facet of your life, some, some issue that you have to deal with or have been trying to deal with or avoiding dealing with. And you could look at it two ways. You could look at it and say, oh my God, this is going to be so traumatic. This is going to be one of the most painful things I have to experience. And it involves a history or a past relationship or a past uh, circumstance that was just awful for me. And I don't want to go back there and da 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 da. Or... The other part of you is saying, well, it's already been 15 years, it's already been eight years, it's already been, you know, three months, who knows how long. And, you know, so it's over, it's done with, there's nothing, there's no reason to fear it. 
There's no reason to feel apprehensive about it. There's no reason to feel hurt by it because of the time that has passed. So there's this idea that for someone or for you by yourself or you and another person, there is a way of looking at this Ten of Swords, this pain, whatever it is, if we're talking about a trauma from childhood, if we're talking about pain from two weeks ago, if we're talking about a broken relationship, whether it's romantic, familial, friends, business, I don't know. There, you can look at it two ways. Maybe these two people are looking at this from their own perspectives. Maybe this person is saying, you know what? It's in the past. You know, because the Nine of Wands is, I'm feeling like a steadfast energy, focused, firm, maybe to a fault because this person is wounded. This person is beat up by, by everything that they're dealing with, okay? But I think this person also is able to look at this scene and, and realize, okay, it is a horror. It doesn't look like it's much fun, but at least we can see it. At least we can see it. You know, if you look at the card there, you've got that sun coming up in the distance. So new light is breaking on this pain. Let's go ahead and look at this horrible murder scene under the new light of the sun, the new light of this day. Let's go ahead and focus. Let's go ahead and deal with it. And this other energy, this other person is like pedaling as fast as they can on top of that water to get the hell away from all this. Or they're pedaling and they're not really moving, they're very stationary, but they're so focused on pedaling, they're like convincing themselves that they're moving away from it. Or they're convincing themselves, I don't have to face it. As long as I stay pedaling, as long as I stay in this perpetual motion, I won't have to stop, because the Nine of Wands is a stopped, fixed, focused energy. It's founded, or it, it, it's grounded in something. As long as I keep pedaling, I don't have to get grounded in this, I don't have to stop and look at this, okay? What the hell's all this mean? I don't know. You'll have to tell me. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, wow. I feel really good about this. This is like, uh, yours, I mean, you're the only, you're only the third sign. But compared to Taurus and uh, Virgo, or excuse me, Taurus and Aries, I feel really clear, like super clear about this message. So, your outcome, Page of Swords. Interesting. So a little bit in your wheelhouse, you know, swords is an, uh, indicative of the air signs, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. So you're kind of touching base back at home. And maybe that's something that literally some of you guys are doing. You know, this person, this young woman, it's got a, that hot air balloon behind her. So is she coming? Is she going? I don't know. And that's the thing about the page, uh, and especially the swords element. It's a touch and go. It's a, I'm here, but now I'm over here. And it, it, it's hard to pin down. So maybe some of you are literally touching base at home. Maybe some of you are, <clears throat> maybe you commute to work or you have, I know a few people who, you know, you work out of town, you work in a different state. So four days a week you live here, which is like 200 something miles away. And then on Friday through Sunday, you go home to your wife, to your kids, or to your husband and your kids, your dog, and all that kind of stuff. So some of you might have this touch and go, I'm here, but now I'm over here kind of energy. Um, and that kind of suits you, I think, because I think this page of swords, given with the hot air balloon, and I really can't, I mean, can you really tell if this person, this, this young lady, is she just landing in that hot air balloon, or is she ready to take off in that hot air balloon? So I think there's something about that uh, that is appealing to you right now, that kind of helps you right now, Gemini, is to have this, I can come or I can go, like this come and go as I please kind of energy, or I come and I go because of a schedule, and therefore I don't have to necessarily, uh, take on any type of seriousness. Uh, the page of swords is sort of serious, like feign seriousness. Like, to be honest, the pages, if you're familiar with Jared, are at all, are the lowest of the court cards, right? Page, knights, queens, kings, that's how it goes, right? But the page of swords is the one edging out the page of wands, even though the page of wands is right there, so... You might be doubling down on this, but the, the Page of Swords is the one that's the most precocious. The one that thinks that they're ready. The one that thinks that they're mature. But it's an overestimation. So you might come to some decision. You might come to some state of mind, Gemini, that says I'm ready or I'm happy to have 
things play out this way. Um, but that might not be the most mature or amicable or even uh, useful position to take. You know, uh, the Page of Swords is very ambitious. Like, don't tell me that this person on this card isn't ambitious. Look at that tight uniform, that sharp uniform, that sword right there. This is a person that says they can do it, but might miss a few things in the execution. You know, I don't know how, how, how can I say this to you? Like you've ever had, there you go. Like if you're baking a cake or something or making anything in the kitchen, whether you're making it from scratch or making it from a recipe, have you ever made anything and you forgot a step or you forgot to add something or you forgot to, you know, put it back in the oven or, or take it out of the oven. And so, you know, it got a little burnt. It got a little crispy under the, under the broiler. You know what I mean? So it's like, uh, I had this intention to make an awesome casserole. I had this intention to make the bombest cake anybody has ever tasted but holy shit i forgot to add the the um the sugar or i forgot to take it out and so now it's a little dense or now it's a little burnt this is what the page of swords does it's not intentional the intention was to make an amazing dish but mm, something happened i missed a step or i got too anxious or i for i said it and forgot it and that wasn't a set it or forget it dish and so now we're eating burnt chicken for dinner, you know what I mean? Or burnt casserole for dinner. And I don't think that there's much that you can do to avoid that, uh, uh, Gemini. Not to say that you should want to avoid it. I just, that, what, why am I saying that? Because I'm getting like this, that's not what you want to hear. I'm here to tell you, Tara sometimes doesn't tell you shit you want to hear. God knows, you know? <laughs> but I feel that kind of like is like a uh, to some of you like that's kind of annoying but I have to tell you that's the truth I think that the page of swords is very good if we're talking about being having new ideas and, and executing things in a logical methodical fashion yes but sometimes the page of swords gets ahead of themselves is too anxious is too eager and therefore, they kind of, like I said, they overlook or they miss a step. And I think that's what's going on. It's not a failure. I don't feel like this is this energy is attached to failure or this energy is attached to any type of huge disappointment. I feel that this energy, if you're aiming for like getting an A, I think like this is like A minus, maybe even to the to the most worst extent, like a B minus. You want an A plus, you might get a B minus, literally. If you're in like a classroom setting or, you know, you and your husband are going to therapy, you guys grade each other and you were like, I'm getting an A plus this week. And your husband hits you with, uh, no, Mary, I'm sorry, B, B minus this week. And you're like, what the, what? You know, so that's what I'm saying. It's not a failure, but it's just not hitting the mark the way that you or someone else expects. Okay. <sighs> Overall. The other page, the one that <laughs> the Page of Swords kind of edges out, is the Page of Wands. And I'm meaning edging out in, in terms of having that enthusiasm and that, that drive and that go, go, go energy. The Wands has it too, but I think the Wands is just a tad slower. I think the Wands is just a, a little bit less ambitious or mm, the approach is just different perhaps. Now this page, I feel less movement. This page of swords has a lot of movement. Page of wands, fire sign, energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. But again, you don't have to know anybody of those signs to be significant. This is a more stagnant. I shouldn't say stagnant. This is a more, um, oh my stomach. I hope you can't hear that. I guess I'm hungry. <laughs> Um, stable, static, but not in a bad way. Or if it is in a bad way, it's because it's, mm. waiting, got it. Okay. So this is like a waiting energy. And when you wait, like literally when you wait, you don't have to be immobile, right? You don't have to 
be still as a rock or as, as stone as a statue, something like that. When you wait for something, you can do other things. So that's what I'm getting is like this energy is a uh, waiting. See, there's like a park bench there. But there's like that city in the background. Oh, uh, there we go. So there's this. Is this girl coming to the city? Is she going to the city? Is she coming from the city? Whatever. And she's standing, right? But she's right next to this bench. So there's this idea of waiting, but not waiting. Waiting, but still carrying on business as usual. Or still having interest in other things. There's that potted plant nearby that's giving me that vibe. I can wait, but let me tend to this. Oh, I can wait, and while I wait, let me take care of this, is kind of what I'm feeling. I don't think that necessarily belongs to you. I think that this energy belongs to someone else. This other person might be waiting for you, Gemini, or <sighs> might be waiting on something between you, like might be waiting on something that benefits you both or, or connects you both. And similar to that Page of Swords energy, the Page of Wands is expectant. The Page of Wands is very future-oriented, is very, I can do this, or I'm looking forward to this, or let me take care of this, and I can do it. You know, I can also bake casseroles, I can also make cakes, you know. And the difference is, because of that waiting, slightly, slightly, ever so slightly more patient uh, uh, quality to this Page of Wands, this person's cake is not going to get burnt. This person wants an A+, plus, they're probably going to get an A or an A-. minus. So there's a little bit more of subtlety with this person. There's a little bit more of a slower, more balanced approach to something. Or, you know, it's just a little calmer. This feels like, like I said, with the Page of Swords, a touch and go. I'm here and there. Haywire, kind of, maybe a lot of irons in the fire with this Page of Swords energy. This is like, I have a I have a reasonable amount of irons in my fire. I have five wands, or I've got five wands. I've got five irons in the fire. That's perfect. This person has like eight. This person has like nine. And that's way too many. So there might be a divergent energy between you and someone else right now, okay? Gemini. That's your reading for February 2019. I hope you liked it. I hope you liked it. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit that uh, like button below that uh, YouTube provides for you. If you want to go ahead and leave comments down below so you let me know how this resonated with you, I would love to read that. I always love reading the comments. It kind of affirms to me what I'm doing here and gives me a nice little smile on my face. So if you want to put a smile on my face and tell me how this resonated with you, I would love that. Um, also down there, or you can use one of the buttons to share this across your social media platforms if you want to. And the coolest button, in my opinion, is the subscribe button. <laughs> if you've been with me for a while, or even if you're a new viewer and you like what you saw here today and you want to keep seeing that, hit that subscribe button. There's going to be a little notification bell. You click that. It'll show you when I put new content up. Right now, I'm only doing two different things. I'm only doing the monthlies and the birthday readings, but very soon... Probably by spring, I'm hoping to launch at least one new form of content that I hope to maintain uh, on the channel, okay? So if you want to get into all that, just hit that subscribe button. Gemini, I thank you so, so much for watching up until this point, okay guys? I will be back in about three or four weeks to do your March readings. Until then, take care. Bye.